Um, and I'll jump a little and say that it's through the study of the Meyer material that these existential questions have been largely answered to the degree that I can comprehend answers because some of these answers go into levels of science that we'd know nothing about on earth. And that is contained in the Meyer material. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us again. As always, I'm so excited to have our gracious host with us, Michael Horn. And we always talk about such interesting things. And I know all of you are very interested because you leave a lot of questions in the comments. And Michael's always very happy to answer them. And we're gonna touch on a few of those questions today. But Michael, I thought we would get started because we've spoke several times and we never really talk about you. And I think people would be very interested to hear how you got involved in this whole thing with Billy, you know, kind of the roots of it. And also you have a lot of work that you devoted your life to. Um, like you have workshops, you made some documentaries, you have Ching Gong exercises. Am I correct? Yes, that's accurate. So let's, you know, devote a little bit of time so folks can understand a little bit more about you. And I think that would help them understand Billy better as well. Well, in that case, I'll, I'll be glad to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. You've got the floor. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Right there. Down there. <laughs> um, actually, this whole thing, uh, I could say, started very early in my childhood. I used to have dreams about lights moving across the sky in formations. And it were circular lights. And this was way back in the day. Um, I was beginning to listen to radio shows, space-oriented radio shows, back in the 1940s. And I would carry that through to listening into the 50s and then the TV shows that would come. So the... You know, the interest in things from out there was in me at an early stage. And when these when these dreams would occur, I would have certain kinds of feelings about these objects in the sky. Now, I'm not absolutely sure that I'm getting all my chronologies right for my own history, but the, the, the radio shows in the 40s were very interesting. They were kind of primitive, as were the subsequent early TV shows where they would have in the TV shows would have little models on wires going across like rockets and stuff, very primitive stuff. But I always wanted to know from an early age, what was out there. I wanted to know things like what was outside of space? How far did it go? How could there be nothing? How could we, how could there be nothing? Which is still, these are still very potent existential questions when you start contemplating and wrestling with them. And I wanted to know, I remember it was somewhere around the age of 10. I asked my mother, I, uh, tell me, I said, well, I want to know the truth about God and Jesus. And I, I didn't come from a religious home of any sort. It was somehow stirring. And she said, well, my mother was just very down to earth. She was a little Russian refugee came to America escaping the, the communists and the Nazis and all sorts of stuff. And um, she said, well, she was knitting or something. I remember she was just sitting there looking down. And she said, as far as I'm concerned, God is love. And the rest you'll have to find out for yourself. And I thought, well, that's interesting. Um, and I'll jump a little and say that it's through the study of the Meyer material that these existential questions have been largely answered to the degree that I can comprehend answers because some of these answers go into levels of science that we'd know nothing about on earth. And that is contained in the Meyer material. But things pertaining to who or what is God and who were, you know, who was Jesus, did he exist? These types of things are answered quite profoundly without any beliefs. And this is one of the things that 
in my getting involved with this material, I started to find was extremely interesting because while I didn't have any religious beliefs as such, maybe just common ones, though there must be some deity out there, what have you, I wasn't raised with any. So coming to look at, to study, and to test the logic and the reasoning behind what I was studying, that came a little more easy for me than it may have come for many people who I know have come to this material and come to the, some of the same places, but who came from various belief systems, religions, what have you. So coming to something that doesn't have beliefs that you have to, any beliefs, let alone those that you have to embrace and endorse at the risk of eternal damnation and suffering and torture and all these things that are contained in various belief systems and religions made it easier to try to make sense of what the teaching in this case was, which is the core. People may be, you know, we get to it, we just discuss it maybe now, maybe later, whatever you want, but th th these wonderful objects here in these photographs, these are, these are the only photographs that have been conclusively determined to be legitimate photographs, pre-digital era, era craft of unknown origin, not originating on earth, no falsifications, modifications, hoaxes, manipulations. That being said, we can say now, this is not the most important thing. If we reflect on aspects of these photos, what meaning, okay, if that's a real object from outer space, and it's really so, and it's piloted by beings that come from, you start to unravel and go, this is a bigger picture. Again, there's no beliefs. You don't have to believe the photographs are real. They've been tested for the past 40 some years and independent experts, state-of-the-art equipment, starting in the 70s, state-of-the-art equipment, up to the 2000s, state-of-the-art equipment. This man couldn't have hoaxed him. He didn't have this equipment and the these discrete high-level analyses reveal things. Okay, a little far afield, but connected to the whole thing. So I get involved in this in, an, in a way that's kind of organic for me. And I walk into a bookstore in 1979. There's Billy's first book, Billy Meyer, with these stunning photos. And it, they're mind-boggling. I buy the book right away, September, it was actually September of 1979. And I read it because there's text, there's analyses of evidence, there's some quotes in there, and I would find out later, well, I knew it when I read it then, but I would find out later more about the extraterrestrials who were being quoted and in their conversations with this man. And because this then got me into the timing of the more contemporary so-called UFO cases and studies and claims by people to be in contact, what have you, I had something that I could compare. I would have in the body of this material ever increasing authenticated evidence, not only of photographic and, and video and film uh, nature, but analyses that had been done on metal samples that had been given to this man that are connected to the manufacture of the craft. Sound recordings made of the craft. And, you know, always you would have skeptics come forward. We can let that fly because <laughs> that, that should fly away. That's been defeated. They, they still run around and carry on. But no, this, was, this has had independent aerospace um, aeronautical uh, and aerophysics, high-level people who had nothing to do with UFOs, at least initially until they start finding out what they're looking at. So that whole body of evidence is what was my evolution from just the early radio, TV, I'm interested in this, the dreams. Suddenly, I have material to look at. And beyond that, at the same time, 
I get subsequent to the 1979 book, I get gifted with 1800 pages of transcripts that are allegedly the conversations that this man, Billy Meyer, is having with these human beings from another star system. That's the first 1800 pages. To date, Meyer has published 45,000 plus pages of information. Lots and lots of that are the conversations. Other things happen to be his own um, articles, prophecies, predictions. We've spoken about some of those. And so this is unparalleled. And the reason so many people who come to this, let's say, during these times and have never heard of, well, I've never heard about this before. Really? If this is real, wouldn't you think that the entire world would have known it? People don't know because it is real. Now, that's my point of view. and Nobody has to take that, and you shouldn't take that. You, there's plenty here where anybody could go through their own process, such as I and other people have gone through, with the benefit of decades of research that you can also vet and test, and work that has been done whereby you have it. Now, you didn't have to do what we did. There were original investigators before me, wonderful investigative team led by Lieutenant Ke Colonel Wendell Stevens. There was Lee and Britt Elders, Tom Welsh, Jim Dilatoso, people who were specialists in private investigation, in aeronautical things, in uh, security and uh, ferreting out and, you know, doing high level investigative work for the purpose of determining things that were risks, true or false. Later on, a man would approach me several years ago, United States Air Force Office of Special Investigation, super high level, really super high level guy who wasn't into UFOs, but he comes upon this, he thinks it's a hoax. We have a conversation one day and then we are, he's interrogating me for three months. I've told the story many times. And then he comes forward and says, look, I'll just tell you, because he was a skeptic. He said to me, first off, first day, I think it's a hoax. You weren't willing to talk to me. I said, yeah, this should be fun. Let's go. Eight months after that, after he did three months with me and five months on his own, deep investigation, he says, I'll tell you, 100% ironclad, authentic, I'll take on any skeptics on your behalf. He took on a couple. He dismantled them. He said, look, talking to these people is a waste of time. They don't know anything. They don't know what they're talking about. They're not bona fide investigators, researchers. They don't know the methodologies to determine the truth. Think they have it backwards, literally. So I'm writing you an article. Anybody can now do this on their own and determine. Here's the evidence. Here's how you look at it. If you want to think like a real high-level investigator. This guy was not into UFOs. He was tasked with protecting the security of the United States of America. And all these people in clown world, as far as he was concerned, UFOs and all this, uh, leave me, keep me out of that. I thought I could deal with it, but they can't think. So what are you going to do? What's his name so, again, Michael? Joe Tisk. He's, uh, he had retired some years ago. He lives in another country. He doesn't communicate with people. And there are other people who they validated he's a real fellow. I saw his certificates from the government, from the Air Force and from the Department of Defense. These endorsements, certificates, you know, promote this man, et cetera, et cetera. He was the real deal. And he, he didn't have to uh, didn't have to show me this stuff. He did. But I could tell from, if not in the first conversation, I was impressed with the guy his just in your face stuff, but the way he asked questions and everything, I thought, well, whatever this guy does, because he didn't tell me until I guess it was eight months after our first conversation. Boom, I'll tell you who I am and what I do or did. And here, open your email. You see that stuff? Yeah. And then he explained, this is from the Department of Defense. That's the Office of Special Investigation, the United States Air Force. I ferreted out moles. I did, I read body language like nobody's business. I had these people in front of me. I did hundreds of these interrogations, these personal you know, examinations and interviews. I, I can tell when somebody's lying. And he said, by the way, I went online after I did all this stuff and researched the information. I watched every video of Billy Meyer. That's the most honest guy I've ever seen. And I know when I'm being deceived. 
or when someone's trying to, you know, people and who would. So this can was. folks my... find this on your blog? Pardon me? Can folks find this on they? Oh, yeah. They sure. On your blog. Okay. Yeah, I'll send you a link or put it up or whatever. Yeah, I'll have it across the screen for people. Sure. And so you know what? Once he came up with that, the skeptical challenges disappeared, except there were a couple of people who were very foolish and said, well, I can't find this guy. I want to talk to him. And I said, well, he probably doesn't want to talk to you. Well, how do we know he exists? He said, and I said, look, he says in here, if you'll just go and read what he said, you don't have to be an investigator like I am. In other words, you don't have to already know how to do this. If you follow standard steps for criminal forensic investigations, means, mode of opportunity, consider these questions. And he would put up, he, gave, he gives in there how you can figure this out. And he explained how real evidence and the examination of it works, how one piece of legitimate evidence can trash all sorts of circumspect, circumstantial evidence that would otherwise be pointing to a guilt or hoax or something. And so people in ufology, they know nothing. They, these are not people who come with this understanding. And look, I I'm not at this guy's level, but I learned how to do enough that I can determine things for myself and I can ask questions. Even if I come to a place where I this isn't conclusive for me, I can get far enough and you use logic. He shows you, use your critical thinking series. You don't have them. Here's how you do it. So all these people that pretending to know about UFOs and I'm in contact to you and have that to you, experience or blah, 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 they have no evidence. And what they think is evidence is basically useless. Doesn't mean that everybody, everybody's wrong. We can get to that. It just means that, no, that's not how you do it. And so the people that thought they were so smart to say, well, I'm good. I've got to talk to this guy. I can't prove he exists. I said, well, he doesn't want, he doesn't want you to prove he exists. He wants you to be able to do what he did. Yeah, you don't have to be at that level to walk through this. And if it takes you time, you can practice. And right. then you'll understand how and why this is legit. And he said, look, he's at the end of his whole thing and people read it, he says, as far as skeptics go, you can't really convince them. You shouldn't bother to try. They will always have some other out because they can't handle it. And he says, look, if you want the truth, this is how you can come to it. And he says, I think you'll understand things. It's like, look, he asks simple questions. He says, how did this man know when and where to be to take 36 photos at a time and film sometimes at the same time, let alone the films and video? How did he know? And we know he didn't fake these. So... And, and there are people that go on and say, oh, look, so-and-so duplicated the photos. Oh. oh. But it's so silly. I showed there's a guy, Michael something Smith or Jones or whatever. He's a model maker. Uh, and he didn't, he, not on the UFO level, but he makes these little towns with cars. You look at this, you're looking at a whole, this is real. And then the camera pans back and it's this big. Right. There are people who will study every detail of a thing. They duplicate an effect. What they can't do, and this is why none of the skeptics that spend their life trying to duplicate Billy's photos to prove them false will ever have their photos and computer analyzed because it'll show, oh, it's a small model close to the camera. These are big objects. And there's all sorts of clues and cues, even in the first book with the photos. They did thermographic analyses whereby energy fields being um, generated and detected around the craft can be picked up with a thermographic. Right. I've seen those pictures, yeah. Right? So you can't do that with a little model. You, nobody did. Nobody's been able to do it. And it goes on and on. So it starts for me long ago with lights in the sky and seeing being beneath an object that's spinning. I knew that these things rotated at a very early age. And even though I didn't, who knew they were real? And then it marches on through, and then it comes to the point that I'm studying Meyer's material. I get more material in my hands beyond the 1,800 pages. And then I start to see these prophetic, um, well, warnings made manifest in real time. And it's shocking. I'm going, wait a minute. That's when the first one happened, pardon me, or the second or third, I'm going, wait a minute. That's in Billy Meyer's material. 
And I'd reach under my bed originally, 1,800 pages. And sometimes I knew rough, roughly where the things were, but other times I had to, you know, dig again through. And it would be, well, he foretold that 30 years before our scientists discovered it. And he still, in that thing, from now, it's, let's say, 50 years old, has more specific details scientifically than they did then. And every time they discover a new detail, it's already in there. We're talking about the planet Mars, Venus, black holes. In Italy, we just talked about the prophecies Italy. in Italy. Yes, and, and, and now that you bring that up, you see people say, oh, well, that hasn't happened yet. And we're going, look, these things are so massive that are coming. And some that have already come, and if people start looking around, they'll see it. Because there were times early on, and I, I'll show you that at some point, where they actually told him in advance when and where, and they happened, and it was published. Now they only tell you maybe where and what, but not when. Right. So what what's happened is people get into this silly, well, that hasn't happened. And, and even like they're skeptics and say, well, he didn't predict 9-11, he didn't predict this. Earth. The truth is he did. He did. And we can prove it was published before the events happened. But because people are so intrinsically fearful and all-knowing, and they have to be right, there can't be something greater, there can't be somebody, an unassuming human being having these experiences for 80 years greater than them. Well, there is. And he's not going to run around and prove it to you. You just have to use your own brain. So with what you just brought up, the earthquakes, these things are unfolding as they were foretold. It could be a year or two. It could be a month. But things like Campi Flegrai, uh, Mount Etna, Mount Vesuvius. Oh, yeah, it's all happening now. Over those there. are active now. Yeah. And in 48, not only does Billy get these warnings, 1948, specifically naming all these volcanoes, but his first extraterrestrial teacher says between 25 and 2017, I mean, 2015 and 2017, 2016, there will be these strong earthquakes in central Italy that will be the precursors to these volcanoes becoming highly active. And then the eruptions and then the, they're all connected underground as all these volcanoes around the world are actually connected. But right. 2016, I thought, well, here's a way to find out if this is hooey or not. I go online and I search Central Italy 2016 earthquakes. The strongest earthquakes on record in Italy occurred in Central Italy in 2016. What are you going to do? This guy's spelled it out. He describes these submarine, these underwater volcanoes, tens of thousands around the world before, decades before our scientists discover them. So, it goes on and on. And the problem is the human beings of Earth, en masse, not here and there. There's numbers of people around the world that have woken up to going, I better think about this. I think. Yeah. The masses of people, they're lost. Well, we have confirmation opinion. bias too, which, you know, we're oh. always looking. Yeah. I mean, we're always looking to confirm our beliefs. Almost. That Right, exactly. Is there anybody else like you with the devotion and dedication to Billy that you connect with still that maybe does videos and publishes content about Billy? Well, there's one guy now at, in Switzerland. I know him. He, he filmed me and we put out two of, uh, of those things, that, lots of prophetic information. And of course, it's already even since last year's stuff has come true. But he's got a channel on in Swiss. He runs around and interviews people or has them come to him. He interviewed me when we were there. Right. Um, he's mainly trying to do a lot of documenting of things. He's had Billy off screen narrating things about photographs and when and where they were taken and stuff. I mean, it, it's such a rich, dense, evidence rich thing. You can take all of known ufology and put it in a little, put it in a cup and then get a swimming pool for the Billy Meyer case, Olympic size, if you don't mind. So this guy, Michael Feutlander, is doing that work. There's people in different groups in Australia, in Canada, in Italy. I'm in touch with the Italian group. I, you know, I, 
talk to them and send them stuff. And they said, you know, we're trying to warn the people here too. Thank you for, we share says, these people. This is how crazy it was, pardon me. In the Campi Fligray area, I think it was, they send up a helicopter with a relic, a religious relic, a piece of a heart of some saint to fly over the area to bless everything. Ladies and gentlemen, there's about a half a million people in that area that may not make it out alive when that thing blows up. But if you're going to be closer to ascending uh, into heaven on that, you're going to probably be going straight through hell first. Good luck. You want to worry about pieces of dead saints. Sorry. I mean, the illogic, yeah. you just look at our beliefs. They're, they're goofy. And, and all this information, I know I saw the letters on They Fly blog too as well. You posted. And we'll have the links, folks. So I'll, I'll make sure they're in the description of this video so that folks can click on them and check it out. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, we start, we went a long ways here, but from the 40s. Yeah. It's over here. No, I, I, I always admire your dedication and the drive that you have to try to get the message out there. Um, I think it's so important. My next question, and folks are asking, is I think during one of our talks, if, if correct me, you had mentioned that people do not get taken. They don't like to use the word abducted, so they use the word taken. Uh, why would you discount that if if they're if they're you know taking Billy and have taken him and and interacted with him wh why not other people I mean some of their stories Michael are so let me give you shit. I'll give you a two part answer Go ahead. Billy is a singularly singularly unique situation and case for these times there have been six other people in human history who've had the same thing with Billy, but they date back actually thousands of years and hundreds of years. It were from hundreds to thousands of years ago. We know some of their names, but let's answer this question. Um, this series, this isn't that Billy's taken. Billy meets an extraterrestrial human being who invites him onto his craft when he's five years of age. And it's always voluntary. And everything they they have it's a very specific purpose humankind's future the future survival of the humankind and people can say well why would they do this and why would they leave it alone you folks you don't have to there's nothing to believe here and you can't prove a lot of that stuff from 50 60 70 years ago and eh, don't worry about it but there are other people who have been you can say taken or abducted, not a heck of a lot. Most of this, when I, I let me preface that or come in at the end and explain it, who have had encounters with extraterrestrial people who've picked them up, done examinations or whatever. In some cases, in some very few cases, hostile intent, others rather neutral scientific. The other being taken when someone actually has been taken is secret military. And Meyer has said that from the beginning. It's the same with the mutilations of animals. These are things that are done to engender fear in us of the unknown, the other, the stranger, the extraterrestrial. And the agenda to create fear goes back on Earth to the 40s or so. The awareness of extraterrestrial presence goes back to the early teens. Yes, it goes back prehistorically, but I'm speaking in modern times. So what happens is, because we are bombarded through every form of communication and media with so-called ET alien, extraterrestrial, this, that, and the other thing, human beings pick this up unconsciously or subconsciously, however it is, and in our dreams, there's it's constant now because the agenda is to incorporate this phenomena and to demonize it, to prepare more and more weapons for more and more wars. This is, I could go into all sorts of stuff, the Lou Elizondo coming on the scene and Chris Mellon and lots of stuff. 
But the people that claim, oh, I've been abducted by extraterrestrials, they can't prove that. And that's fine, because how would you prove it? Really, I mean, you have an experience, you don't, you have any experience, you don't know what it is. A lot of it is happens in dream states, dream paralysis, and they're not being communicated. Nobody can prove their claims. So why not simply say, look, I, I think I told you I had a very unusual experience in the 1970s that foretold stuff right down to full-blown holographic virtual reality without glasses, situational manipulations and things. I wrote up, I have a therapy out on it, it where people can utilize the essence of what I was told in that interaction for their own purposes. Okay. But, and I thought it said, I am your future self coming to you across a bridge of time built by you and others like you, that you may know you are an eternal being. And then three different healing modalities, two of which occurred. And the third one, you could say maybe the closest thing is the meta thing from, uh, what's his face, Zuckerberg, but you don't need glasses for this. So I actually found a way to convey this to people where they can do it for themselves with their phones or their tablets or anything else. And the people that grasp that, how to do that. And I was doing this on myself in the eighties using video cameras. And I was doing sessions on people and having them come to me and say, remember this thing I you did? Here's the project that I finished. Here's this. I became a citizen diplomat to the USSR or Russia, whichever it was at the time. I think it's still USSR in America. And I made this video and I did this. One guy wanted to be a background singer for Michael Jackson. He was already a, a background singer, but he, he hadn't risen to that level, if you will. A couple of years later, I get a phone call from him. Hey, you remember me? Yeah. I just came back from Japan. Guess what happened? I said, what, 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 what happened? He says, I was singing backgrounds for Michael Jackson. I got to tell you about this. He said, <laughs> I got chills all over. I mean, I created th this therapy in 1985. It was 13 years after the experience. Where this, I hear this, get a video camera thought in my head. Three times I got a video. Oh, yeah, I'm supposed to do future self sessions. I don't even know what I'm talking about. I'm writing this thing as I'm driving home. I get home. I call this woman I know. I said, hey, Susan. I want you to come over here with some gold you want to do, have her become, and we're going to do a future. So I said, what's that? I'll show you when you get here. And I had a camera set up. I had the whole process written out by the time she arrived. She ended up doing, doing the session. She ended up doing the things she talked about. And then I rolled on with the, all sorts of people. And then I had to do something else. You know, I don't have, have people come over to my house all the time. I have to do these sessions. And I didn't realize at the time, this is pretty far out. It was just like, I did a session of myself before I had done some other people. I had this multidimensional thing going on with me visually appearing in multiple television set things. I just created this thing. So I figured out how to do it in the simplest way. It wasn't about the technology. It was about getting people to realize they are their own authorities and they can set their own goals and be accountable to themselves and change their goals and all and then just realize how it feels and what they even look like to themselves when they are in that state which i call the frequency of fulfillment i mean I'm, i got a little off track you're talking about this but now, this is with this billy's concept or no but this was my concept this just came but, to you yeah, yeah. But the thing is underlying it, you see, in the essence of this teaching in the case, the first principle foundational premise is 100% self-responsibility for your own life and everything in it. Well, then there's seeing things as they are and being able to decide what you do with the thought, how the thought leads to all this stuff. Well, this is a technique you can do yourself where you get to not only do that, you get to see yourself and make changes based on what your interaction with yourself is. You get to literally ask yourself questions and answer them to yourself on the screen. Wow. You don't need somebody to go to and have a whole institute and all that stuff. But, you know, because people are used to entertaining themselves and all of the communication things, when you realize that you can do this thing 
that brings you literally face to face with yourself. <laughs> it's the simplest damn thing, but it it's structured in such a way then that you can build your own component questions into it. And then you realize that once you're in this state where you get it about your own self-responsibility, you don't necessarily need the thing anymore. It just will help you because you, when you start to study the teaching in depth, Meyer's teaching, yeah. it's, it's deep and you go, wow. And that you're now in a place of, what do I do? How does it? Sometimes you can only read two paragraphs or something, let alone a page, because while you think you're understanding, you're going, I got to read that again. There's nothing to believe here. He's not selling anything. There's no fancy, goofy talk. But the and the language, I understand the words. Most of it, some of it, I don't understand that concept. But so when you are in that thing with yourself, you can be in that thing with yourself all the time. Yeah. For better. For better. But some of these abduction stories are seem so real. The people seem so authentic. Not everybody can be crazy and no. make up these stories, right? Well, well look, let's really, now that's uh, two different qu things there. Not everybody can be crazy and make up these stories. The human mind, look around at what the human mind can, can and has and does and continues to create. The things that happen on the below conscious level when you dream, when I dream, we can have, we are living in something. We cannot mock that up in real time. Right. We can't even hold the thoughts long enough of that whole scenario. Mm -hmm. Now, when people also have a great desire, and I'm going to tie this into something, to be special. They may or may not know they have that. Uh, it afflicts zillions of people, especially today. What do I mean? This hero worship, sports figures, movie stars, celebrities, all these people. People are wearing jerseys with names and numbers of other people. They're buying stuff with other people's names on it. They're worshiping celebrity and fame. The internet is filled with so-called influencers, 23-year-old people, and that can be old for some of them, I know, who uh, they have followers. What's the substance of it? There's none. Kim Kardashian. Yeah. And let me tell you something. Lou Elizondo, the he's the Kim Kardashian of ufology. Mm. He's famous for being famous for nothing. He's presented no evidence. He tells stories. He seems like an affable guy. Um, really nice guy. I don't know. I mean, nothing personal. He simply is the Kim Kardashian of ufology. Show me. Where's the meat? This guy promised, when he came out, he had five things he promised. I will always tell you the truth. I will never lie. I will, so I wrote a thing. I posted it where he could see it. So you always tell the truth. What's the truth about the Billy Meyer case? Crickets. Oh, really? You don't have nothing to say about the, the most evidence-rich thing, but you want to talk about the threat assessment? What threats? From who? So this whole thing is part of the disinformation. Now, look, Lou could be a willing or an unwilling, a witting or an unwitting disinformation agent. Look, he's a trained disinformation agent. He works in intelligence, which it's that's a context is secretiveness, misleading, dis all for the sake of national security, which we wouldn't need if we weren't sticking our nose in everybody's business around the world yeah. and bombing and killing people. Now I get it for somebody like him. Um, but when you look at everyday people and, and there are thousands of these stories, I don't know how many there are, but there's a lot. And the people, I, I find it hard to believe that it's magical thinking that they're just desire to be famous or, or to be in the public arena makes up these stories about being taken by, I mean, can't they be legitimate, Michael? Not by the thousands? No, they can't be by the thousands. There can, I said in the beginning, there are some people who have had experiences that are not either concocted through their imaginations or terrestrial ex 
in origin. But those people are far and few between. And here's the problem. You see, a man like Billy Meyer has served, not like Billy Meyer, for his trouble of bringing forward, you know, storage rooms full of evidence, literally, has had 25 attempts in his life, attempts to kidnap his children, discrediting, uh, just the worst thing said about and done to yeah. him since childhood. And we've got people that wander forth because it's available. And, and then uh, uh, these gray beings floated into my room. Great, wonderful. So tell me two things, sir or ma'am. Where's your evidence? Let's start there. Where's your evidence? Okay, what about well, the implants that have been removed? There's a very famous doctor that has The dedicated. late Roger Lear. I yes, knew Lear. Guy. And when it came down, push came to shove, there was no conclusive proof that there was anything of extraterrestrial manufacture involved. In many cases, and Meyer had written about this long ago, people also pick up accidentally particles of metals, glasses, different things. Then there are things that can be put. All of this chipping, this biochipping stuff that's going on. Oh, yeah. I mean, is, and all of this goes that. hand in hand to prepare people through very nefarious. The people in high-level intelligence who work to manipulate you, who try to sell you morons to run the country on either side of the political screen, we're going to end up with somebody who is unqualified to lead, no matter who, which side. Right, right. We will end up with people unqualified because the, the people of America and many other places refuse to learn how to think and be discerning. But let's come back to this, because people say, why are you straying off that? There's no evidence. Then we go, well, let's just say you had this experience. So let's just deal with it at, at that level. What's the meaning of it? What is that supposed, what's the value of it? Well, there, uh, there's extraterrestrials out there and they're trying to save us. What, I mean, really, I, give me a version of the value. What is anybody saying? That they want to tell us a story? And, it, and a lot of people, it is either knowingly or not about some level of self-importance, you know, look, I had some goofy ass experience here with this future self thing. I can't prove that that's my future self. I'm out there. All I can say is I got information. Let's just say some part of my consciousness decided in 1972 to tell me things about computers and holograms and stuff that I knew nothing about. And how these parts of my consciousness could be recorded on screens. Great. Wonderful. Doesn't mean it's extraterrestrial or future self. It means somehow I tapped in some part of me. Right. Not my ego, because I didn't know what. But if that's if my ego's involved in wanting to tell people about it and teach them, yeah, see if, what you make of this. Because people could get other things from this. People have, because they came and they said, I've got this goal. I said, fine, I'll run you through the process. I don't, I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to ask you questions. Then I'm going to feed back the information you gave me. Then I'm going to ask you more questions. I'm going to have you look into the camera, blah, blah, blah. And the rest of it is up to you. So this is... The thing, people want to come forward thinking, look, if I really ended up having an experience with an extraterrestrial and I could even prove it, I wouldn't open my mouth because I, if that was the case, there'd be a good chance I, whoever this I is, because it's probably not me at this age, uh, you're going to get a visit from some people who are going to say, we've got to take you for a ride here. We'd like you to right. stay and, talk to you. and there's those stories, too. There's I mean, no there's, you know, that that makes sense. But I mean, I, I, you know, I tend to lean towards the belief that if, if these ETs exist, which they do, according to Billy and his proof, that maybe they are reaching out to certain people and, you know, they are visiting them and ah. who knows? Okay. They reach out to certain people or they have over time, but in a different way and for a different purpose because they know and quite frankly, even these people that tell you they're meeting, if let's say they're sitting around with some other people awake and somebody pops into that meeting and they're clearly not from here. A lot of people are going to need to change their depends. Let me tell you. So what you've got here is people that uh, lovely story, you know, here's how the because Billy talked about this. He said the play are in people, the ones that he's been you know, interacting with and get, getting information from them. Right. Contest. No, it's accurate. Where's your evidence, folks? How do they, who do they reach out to anybody? Yes. He said, 
scientists, especially people in medical sciences and in areas that don't have any possible military op applications are impulsed unconsciously. So it isn't like a guy goes, wow, hey guys, what is it? I'm working on this thing. Yeah, we know you're on the same project with us. Well, I just got a download of information from, yeah, he'd be in the loony bin. Right. No, they don't even know. They get, it's an impulse. It's to develop an idea. Something gets impulsed in there and they, they think it's theirs, and, but it's voluntary. They take it or they don't take it. They develop or they don't. Right. And it's sent out and to know the people that come forward with this stuff. And I'm not saying some people are not very sincere. And I'm not saying that some people could have had some legitimate experience. But you ask the question, why wouldn't extraterrestrials? Because there's nothing, absolutely nothing in it for people with the capability to travel through space and, in Meyer's case, time, to sit down and or come in and sit down and try and have a conversation with somebody who is in cosmic kindergarten, mm -hmm. literally, blah, 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 having to figure out with all the religious beliefs, all the political beliefs, no beliefs, this beliefs, that thing, uh, my mom and dad won't lie. When you trigger the consciousness and the deep, people can go psychotic. That's why these are not, these people have not come down and shown their presence in undeniably inescapably we would go nuts on mass oh yeah maybe we maybe we those of us who think we could would handle it maybe some people are mellow enough the majority of people on earth would go nuts in one form or another they now these are our god they're going to worship state they go to oh it's the demons and the devil state now they're fearful now they're attacking or trying to now they're attacking other people you sent them i mean we are crazy on this planet if you don't, it, just look what happens to people who decide to, I want to be leaders of the country and they're not popular with a certain group. Now it's becoming, it's conversational. Oh, they tried to kill so-and-so twice. This should be unheard of stuff. Yeah. We are already in crazy land here. Well, and that's the truth. Let's talk about Elon a little bit. Um, I okay. read uh, an article on your website where you, where you stated, or Billy, so forgive me, that the purported objective of SpaceX Starlink project is to create a global broadband internet belt around the Earth to be assembled on a fleet of between 12 and 4,200 satellites. What's, in your estimation, in your opinion, what is the overarching goal of these satellites? Is it nefarious? What in the world well, is going on up there? Far be it from me to be able to really say anything with authority on it. I can say that there are certain things. Meyer has said in one of the contacts, without saying more, he said, when the Elon Musk project, you know, has come to a fulfillment, the people of Earth may not be too happy with it. Okay, it leaves that out there. Now, since decades ago, we've had these deep space platform satellites and all sorts of things, top secret stuff. Um, what the concern among a number of people is, is that, and they tie it into uh, things that are in and all of this, which are now, we published a study, you know, I, I met a guy who uh, came out with a product and I'm really glad to share that with people because it's been now in a peer-reviewed level one study shown to remove nanotoxins, forever chemicals, graphene, which people are... And which some people are saying that can be pulsed and connected through satellites such as the Elon Musk or others. So... On this thing, I'm glad to tell people about this thing, and they can find it on the website. I think my most recent or one of the articles has those tests, and they can get the stuff for themselves. And I'm going to say I'm proud to promote that because everything this guy's done so far has shown through testing this is helpful. And what has happened to him is things like the, uh, let's just say, money management platforms and different platforms 
withheld payments to him and through the shipments of the components and all. Oh, really? It must be a hoax. I thought they're trying to screw him over already. Well, let's footnote that conversation with recently there's been a study by Japan that has definitively proven that there is nanotechnology in these things as well as other things like beverages and foods but yes. um i will put the link again to this study so that folks can i mean these are peer reviewed yeah. papers that you know are all over the internet now because i don't want to have a problem with youtube saying yeah, they platform me for daring to publish the truth in 2020 right so i want to make sure that we footnote this conversation with the fact that we're talking about this specific article that was a peer reviewed publication that was released by Japan and states what what in fact we're talking about and for folks that don't know anything about this topic as well because we have to tread carefully when we talk about these types of things yes so let me let me add to that mm -hmm. as early as 1947 49 young Edward Albert Meyer was told about this disease. Look, I don't put it past the lunatics to think that the most important thing is trying to control everybody in life instead of right. finding out what they're here for. Right. I mean, and again, who knows? It could, could be true. It could not be true, but it's a theory that's out there. True. I mean, it's true. all over the internet. We should be able to have these types of conversations without worrying about being deplatformed. We're not saying these things are definitively true. We're just saying that it's open to conversation, open to speculation. I mean, it's sad when, you know, we have to worry about the words that come out of our mouth because we're not intentionally spreading anything that's not true. We're just putting it out there for people to go research and, and think about themselves. That's all. But well, okay, think so about that, it. Yeah, You've I mean, that's. Go ahead. Yes, absolutely. And there is one uh, candidate running for office who has effectively stated that they will try to curtail this and other rights for human beings. Yeah. They're saying that to everybody's face. There, it's There's one candidate that nobody's voted for who's a candidate for the presidency of the yeah. United States. Yeah. So you, pardon me, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm apolitical. I don't care. We have people lie in both, but how anybody can motivate themselves, whether it's at a keyboard, uh, this, a mark about, mail it in, or walk into a, a voting booth, how you can vote for a person who never had a vote to be in that office and who's telling you they will take your rights away. They will make sure you don't say the wrong things and that you don't own something to protect yourself and et cetera, et cetera, and all the other permutations that are implied. I could say- Honestly, I, never, I, never, I never thought we would live in these times. I never, never I in a million years th thought it. Because there's, you see, at the core of this material, as we mentioned a little, is a teaching. And the core of that teaching about self-responsibility, it's a teaching of truth, of life, and of the creation energy spe spirit over all existence and that which is within us. Truth, you these people, when they get up to try and get people's vote, listen, it's so crazy that we could do a whole thing on this, how it is people come forward to say, in order for so-and-so to win, this faction they've got to say this do you realize do you the audience realize that you are being told that people need to lie you, that, that the people saying this think that the person that they want to win isn't saying the right thing to win not never mind that they're simply telling you what whatever they're telling you and you can take it at face value but no it's the wrong thing for this group we are insane yeah, it's in, nuts. in our in our repulsion and revulsion. I mean, I just heard the other day um, a, a very, I'm not going to mention her name, very uh, famous politician, woman, uh, initials are HC. <laughs> I thought you were going to. Yeah, she just stated that 
people should go to jail for spreading misinformation. Yeah. And this that is it's absolutely criminal and, and, and insane to even yeah. make a statement like that. This is part of the agenda of this EU thing, this WEF. Yeah. This, you're going to hear more and more about this yeah. because this is the agenda. These people want dictatorship, yeah. you know, um, but but you can try to tell people and they're going to go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's good for me, whatever. So we will get collectively here what we damn well deserve one way or the other yeah. Yeah. And because we don't deserve the truth here yet. We don't want well, it. it. It's so sad, Michael, because even this conversation, we're just floating stuff around, having a, you know, an open forum of, of debate and conversation. And when you have to start worrying if you're going to get in trouble for that, it's it's George Orwell. It it's is George already Orwell. George Orwell. Listen, please remember, no apology necessary for telling the truth. And Julian Assange, Snowden, other yeah. people, whistle, real whistleblowers who've come forward. This is why I try to tell people, look, stop. Don't focus on this UFO. Yeah, this is the best UFO evidence ever. Move yourself. Okay, go to the prophecy predictions. Why? To find out if these people know what they're talking about. Yeah. Because oh, word. our politicians, our we don't know what we're talking about. We're hearing nothing but disinformation 24 7. So if yeah. these people know and, and these things are happening, you can go, okay, well, at least what are they trying to tell us? Yeah. Learn to detect not your truth. That's fine. There are things that are true for you. The truth, the overriding truth and reality of life. Get with it, folks. Invite it into your consciousness and invite it to come up in your consciousness and read, learn how to find, seek yeah. others who are interested to, because when you see it and when you understand that people are, these political pundits and consultants, when just, just to tell you, when, for instance, when the Democrat candidate was up in, in the uh, debate with the Republican candidate, she was spouting nothing but platitudes and there, there are people, I know someone who does this professionally. I know him. They teach you charisma and, right. how, to, and how to move your hand. She was doing a lot of this stuff there. Yep. This was coming in from the side of the screens, look into my eyes. And when a direct question was answered, she told you stories about her childhood. Absolutely. So, what about this turn the page thing that they're oh, on? Oh, yeah, now? that's enough. They're going to go, the we're, we're going to turn the page. Oh, These are Lord. slogans to try yes. to get people to become dummies oh that they told me to turn the page when right, i was right. preparing this recipe right. yeah it's a recipe for becoming a dummy yeah you, know, yeah. Jesus you have people that are telling you things and excuse me the guy on the other side plenty of stuff is hooey and a lot of the trouble just for equal opportunity here folks yeah 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 this guy has gotten himself you know prosecuted and persecuted, not just because he happened to want to be the president. He did a lot of stupid stuff and stuff that was dishonest. Can you Michael, not admit the whole, that? The whole thing is a cluster F. That's yeah, honestly, it it's just, it, it it's beyond words at this point. There's no rationalizing in my concept of it. There's no making sense of it or rationalizing it. This is why I watch less and less news because it's all <laughs> jibber jabber and fake news. But but I, I have a ton more questions for you, but we're going to have to save them for part two. Because um, in closing... You have though, one last one you want? Because maybe we went I off I do, time. and that's just what I was going to say. Um, I wanted you to explain Billy's creation energy teaching. Maybe you can give us a little bit in, in you know, a little taste. Sure. And then the rest of the questions I'll save for next week. Because uh, I think the other questions are really going to be in depth as well. And I, I don't want to just skim over them. I would like you to sure. take your time and answer them. Let me grab a book here. Just so yeah, I have go right ahead. Despite the strange screen that you're probably seeing there. Hold on. Okay. No, it's good because folks can see Billy's uh, images there nice and clearly now. Okay. Let me see here. I'm looking for something... Yeah, and while you do that, I'm just going to remind people to check the links in the description because 
Um, probably everything we talked about today, I will try to have a reference point in the description below on uh, Michael's blog, they fly blog dot, what is it, dot com, Michael, or dot net? Mayflyblog.com. Dot com, right. So I will have that, of course, uh, running across the screen as well as in the description. And you folks are, are more than welcome to leave comments and questions for Michael. He enjoys answering them, and we will make sure we do that for our next conversation. Because as I said, I still have a lot of questions left for Michael. And questions that you guys have asked in other um, video conversations that we've had. So be sure and leave them in the description. And so go ahead, Michael. Sure. Well, you know, I'm holding, I will see two of Billy's. We've got about a dozen of Billy's books where, because he writes in German. So we have them in English. And the second part of the book is in German for people who want to check things out. And he has books like Introduction to Meditation. Now, All that some, have in front of you. So, oh, sure. Yeah. This is, I'll say, I'll use a silly word here, but this is neat because very often people hear about meditation and it sounds, oh, it's mystical or it's cultic or something. We all, most people, do a form of meditation at some time or other during the day when they're concentrating on something and all. Billy explains how there isn't just one way to meditate. And we can talk about, well, why would we meditate too? But there isn't just one way because as many people as there are, that's you have a way to meditate and there are given ways that you can find out, well, do I want to try that one? There's ways to meditate throughout the day while you're doing any and everything. Well, meditation and it, you know, it could be a little bit of a loaded word, but it is a means of coming into a clearer connection with the conscious mind, even with unconscious things, with how to study things. And of course, engendering peacefulness inside of ourselves, happiness and joy. I mean, the things that you hear too little about in life, everything's a terrorist attack on us here and, or, and serious attacks on other people. So Billy writes books that have information this is an interesting title, and I'll just tell you the title. Listen to this title. Rebirth, Life, Dying, Death, and Sorrow. Rebirth? What? Yeah. Is it, is it, you mean you're not floating up to heaven or going to hell? What? Well, study this and understand that in essence, literally in essence, we are eternal beings, meaning there is a component part which is the human spirit, which reincarnates for very specific purposes many, 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 many times, that the reality of life isn't a fearful thing. And he explains how it works, what happens to the individual, how the next lifetime comes about, why we don't remember the past all sorts of questions that people have and that you know people will challenge well if i'm really having this is another life who was i in the last life and why don't i remember it and, but then there are books like th this is such a magnificent book the way to live the way to live well i know i'm screwing up the visuals here okay more in the center of your, yep here we go the way to live okay that is in itself the most profound thing. There must be a way to live because we're not getting, you know, a lot of joy out of this thing that we keep on having come at. It. But the way to live isn't a dictated belief system. There's not one belief in any of these writings. It means that you are you're, you're given a thought, an idea, a recommendation, advice, a question. Mm -hmm. perception that invokes if you if you just say look i'm willing to read this i want to know what is is there a way and then you go oh, wow I, I never thought of that and you start going a little deeper just like human beings used to do with books pardon me folks these screens it's wonderful it's a lot of fun and it can be very valuable but teaching if you're a student you Maybe you still have books and all in your schools and your universities. But a teaching 
that you test in the same way that you test any practical knowledge, anything that you can test, not just, this isn't philosophy. Oh, maybe it's like this. This is a teaching and it either bears fruit for you or it doesn't. Yeah. Are these teachings from the Plarens to, to Billy or are they just his, his teachings based on his life experience? According to the information in the case, the majority of this is literally that which this creation, this universe operates by. It's teaching. Meyer has said, I write these down, but I am not the author of all. He says, I've written some, of course, but the majority of this is from, you could use this word, the source. Right. And it doesn't have you living in fear of this and you're going right. to be punished. This is how life works. For instance, think of this. Did we ever hear that there is a universal law of, of cause and effect? I think we know that. Of that's course. Cool. It's the underlying law of lots of stuff. There's also a law of provision. A law of provision. What is that? It means the way that the universe, the, the creation, whatever term you're familiar with or comfortable, has a law that is, and I'm going to paraphrase and maybe not get it 100%. When a human being aspires to and lives the best possible life according to their understanding, striving, moving towards love and peace, freedom and harmony, not being perfect, making mistakes, but not intending and not... Right. Repeating. When we do this, life itself is... It releases. It's there. It isn't personal. It doesn't go, John is being a good boy. Therefore, I'm giving him a lottery ticket. It means that we experience the reality of abundance, of having true abundance is having what you need, true wealth, right, right. having what you need. Because when your needs and your wants are aligned you're not trying to amass things for the sake of having having more, more than so-and-so, fear of loss. You live in this abundance. You run into, you're on a collision course with enough all the time in life. Oh, that sounds brilliant. It really does. Makes well, so much sense. When you read the depth of how this life is really works, when Billy says, you know, the foundational stones, cornerstones, love, peace, freedom, and harmony. Oh, these are glib words that we dismiss because love means, well, you're nuts about somebody. Peace means somebody isn't beating me up. <laughs> freedom right. means nobody knows what I'm doing. And harmony means mm, I can hum to myself. No, it's bigger. It's so than much it. more expansive than, than it's, that. It's lifetimes of learning, living, and Becoming the recipient of that which you, every human being, in the core of their being, maybe not consciously, but wants love and peace and freedom and harmony. That means these things encompass, and then everything that flows from that. So if there's a law of provision, we go, well, I don't know. I don't believe it. You don't have to. Well, how do I do it? Well, start reading about right. this. But not just to manipulate to get things like the law of attraction. If I just keep on chanting for yeah, a forever. Right. Yeah. I'll hit the lottery for a billion dollars. Yeah. Lottery. Well, Michael, that was, that, I, I was really glad I asked you that because I loved closing with that, that concept and those words of wisdom and advice to folks. And as I said, next week, we'll, we're going to unfold some more stuff. I have a lot more questions to ask you. We're going to get into some more prophecies from Billy and um, I, I thank you again so much. I always enjoy speaking with you. It's always so insightful and I always look forward to doing it again. Well, thank you, you're, you're welcome. And those things that I think you get most excited about are, you know, I'm telling you what I understand of the core of this, which to me yes. is the core of life. So yes. here we are. <laughs> All right, stick around. I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody. Thank you so much, everyone.